Hey guys, how is everybody doing? Continuing on my Omen review series, here are my thoughts on Damien, the Omen 2. Before I begin, I do want to mention that the rest of these Omen movies are all first time watches for me. I've seen the first movie numerous times, it's one of my favorite films ever made, go watch my review on that if you have not already. And progressing forward, these are all going to be first time watches for me, I have not seen any of the sequels, I have not even seen the 2006 remake, although I already know it's a beat for beat remake, so I'm not really expecting much for that film. So, all these movies are going to be first-time watches for me, so Damien Omen 2 is a first-time experience for me. So, now, I will be completely honest. Walking into this film, I did hear some mediocre things. I did hear a lot of people say that it's not a very good sequel, kind of. I've actually seen some people say it disrespects that original film. But I will say this before I even begin my review. This movie might be one of the more entertaining sequels I've seen, because... It's one of those movies I don't think disrespects that original film. It doesn't do anything wrong to that film. I do think that this is a solid sequel. So, here are my full thoughts on the film. Uh, starting off with my positive, uh, positives on Damien Omen 2, is I did like seeing Jerry Goldsmith uh, return to do the score for this film once again. I even believe he did the third movie as well. Um, Jerry Goldsmith, who did the score for the original 1976 Omen, who made that fantastic score, which is an Oscar-winning score, so I did like seeing him return. The score in this movie is great, as always. It, it's very much like the original, with a few tweaks and a few other scores here and there uh, that are pretty different. Um, yeah, uh, The score, it's great. Jerry Goldsmith uh, is great oh, once again. I think he does a, a fantastic uh, job, especially in the opening credits where we see like this old guy on like a bike, and you see that uh that score come back which i thought was great to see i was really happy to see his name uh, in the credits once again he's a, a, a fantastic uh, composer i love the score that he does for the omens uh original trilogy i think it's great it yeah it was just great to see him come back uh once again for the sequel also really enjoyed to see uh them kind of develop more of Damien to where I do like this take on Damien. I did really like what they uh tried to do with him in the sequel. I did I did like what they were doing with him in the sequel to where I'll talk about more about this in a minute to where he fully finds out that he's the Antichrist and that he is the son of the devil. I'll, again, I'll talk more about that later. But what they tried to do with, with Damien in this movie, I did think was entertaining. I did think he, uh, the guy who played them, I believe his name was Jonathan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, his take on the character is great. I can't really say much about him because in the first movie, he was simply just a five-year-old with like very little lines of dialogue. So I can't really say anything that he, if he's better in this movie or if he's worse in this, uh, in this, in this movie or just as good. But what they do do with Damien now that he's much older and he knows the world more and he's more mature and he's fully grown up and what they do with Damien in this film, I do think uh, they do uh, they do a great job with him. And I think Jonathan, who plays Damien in this movie, I do think he does a pretty good job as an actor. And I'm I'm one of those people that thinks that kid actors or young actors aren't very good because they're very unexperienced, so they don't usually give off the greatest performances. But however, Jonathan uh, playing Damien in this movie, I do think he played a, uh, played him very well. I didn't really have any complaints with him throughout this entire movie. So yeah, uh, what they do with Damien for a sequel now that he's more mature and older, I do think they do a very good job with him. Uh, my final positive, yes, final positive. I there, there's a one kill in this movie that really stood out to me. That was really cool. That this was a kill that I really fucking thought was great. There's this one guy who's like a doctor, I believe he was doing blood tests on uh, Damien, or he did some sort of test on Damien, or he found out something about Damien, I can't really remember. But there's a part where he's in an elevator, and then the elevator stops working, and then it like drops down, but he gets out of it, and he survives. And he's kind of like sitting there like, oh, I kind of survived. But then literally like five seconds later, like part of the elevator like gets loose from, the, from it and starts... Uh, uh, coming down like really really fast and right after that i was kind of wondering are they really going to show this kill or is it going to be like one of those stupid cutaways that they usually do but no they fully showed it that guy got cut in half and that kill was gnarly they showed it they showed him getting cut in half they showed the gore 
that was an amazing kill. It was my favorite kill of this entire movie. It was my favorite omen or final destination kill in this movie. I thought it was great. It was one of the it was the best kill of this entire movie. It was one of the kills that really showed it, like showed the uh, gore in this film, which I was really happy about. They it really showed the gore. I thought it was a really creative kill. I really liked it. I'm glad they actually showed it and they didn't do like a cutaway from it. I thought that kill was great. It was my favorite kill of this entire movie. It was the most gruesome kill out of the entire movie. So yeah, the kill, that was my favorite kill in this entire movie. And it was gruesome and it was badass. Moving on to my mixed aspects. And I don't know, really know how I feel about this movie becoming more of a slasher of an Omen film. Because... One, that doesn't really ma uh, match the omen, because when you look at that film, the original film, that is not meant to be a slasher. This is not meant to be a slasher horror series. This is supposed to be more about like a like a more questioning type horror. I wanna, I don't want to say like a haunted house, but kind of like unholy type thing, but it is not a, it is not a slasher franchise. However, I did like that they tried to take a different approach to the character, and they don't try, uh, not to the character, to the franchise, and they don't try to, try to re, uh, try to uh, recapture that success of the original film, and I'm a, I'm a big slasher fan, that's probably my favorite genre in the horror, in the horror world, but, again, I just don't know how I feel, it, it just doesn't really match the Omen series, but I do applaud them for trying something new. This mixed element is if you have not seen this film. One, one sec. There we go. If you have not seen this film, um, there will be spoilers. So go skip to my negatives. I'll probably have a time card or something around here. Who knows what I'll end up doing? But there's a twist in this movie to where it's very towards the end of the film, and towards the end of the film, the aunt of Damien, I believe it is, and the uncle finds out that Damien truly is the Antichrist, the son of the devil, and he gets the daggers that his uh his brother had, which was Gregory Peck's character, who tried to kill Damien at the end of the first movie. He grabs the daggers. The wife thinks he's crazy at first, but then she uh, grabs the daggers for him, but then stabs him and says, here are your daggers. So basically what the twist is, is that she knows that Damien is the Antichrist, and she says that I belong to him or I am faithful to him, something like that. Now, one, I do think that's a great twist, and I did think that was a really unique, and it caught me off guard, and I didn't really expect it. However, after they introduce it, after they show that, Damien shows up and sets her on fire, like, right after that. And it, it's like, well, why even introduce that? Like, why even do that? Because you sh you show it, like, you, you show us this uh, pretty unexpected twist, but then you go... Uh, then you turn left, and then you just don't do anything with it. It's like, they wrote that, that down on paper, but then the producer said, oh, we gotta get shooting now, and uh, there's no time to finish the story, and the guy was like, whoa, whoa, shit, now I can't write ten more pages exploring that, and so he's just like, uh, fuck, and so he finished the movie right there and then, just set her on fire, and it's just the end of the movie. And it's like, maybe they they introduced that, but then they found out they had a, a low budget to, to film ten more pages, they were like, well, shit, we gotta finish this up. I I honestly wish they kind of introduced that uh, earlier in the movie, except later in the film, because they, if they introduced it earlier in the film, I feel they could have done something more with that, but they introduced it three minutes before the film ended, and it's just like, well, if you're going to introduce that and then just having Damien kill her, then what was the point of introducing that? Now moving on to my negatives. When, and when it comes to the other Omen kills... It seems to only happen whenever someone suspects Damien. Like, if you even think... If anybody even thinks that he did something, like, weird or suspicious, right after that, immediately someone dies. Like, this one girl, uh, like, believes that Gregory Peck, his character in the original, was trying to kill Damien because uh, he believed he was the Antichrist. She believes him. She sees Damien for, like, two seconds and then drives away. And then this crow comes out of nowhere, pecks her eyes, like, pecks on her, like, I'm pretty sure it even took out one of her eyes. And then she gets hit by a truck. And they do that for, like, the rest of them. And it's like, none of them are, like, on accident or anything really like that. It's just, like, they try to introduce things here and there to where they try to suspect Damien or maybe something big will happen. But then it's like, oh, no, fuck you. We're just going to introduce this and just do nothing with it and just kill off these characters. 
It's like, well, why, in, like, again, again with the twist thing, why introduce that these characters are suspicious of Damien if you just kill him off, like, five minutes afterwards? The main issue with this film is that there's really no story in this film. I, I believe I'm going to talk about this later, am I? Yeah, but basically, this, it's the same story as the first film. Someone suspects Damien's the Antichrist, things happen, people die, these people are trying to find out if Damien truly is the Antichrist, like, uh, they're trying to do everything left and right, trying to figure stuff out if he is, and people are dying as they figure stuff out. It's basically a rehash of the first film. They do, it's not beat by beat or anything, it's just the same story. That's why I'm saying no story. It's the same thing. It's the same damn movie. Like, I've seen the story before, and it, they just don't do anything new with the sequel. Because if you're gonna do a sequel to The Omen, do something new. Don't try to make the same movie again with the same story. And this is something they introduce into this film, and then they just do absolutely nothing with it afterwards. And it's like, so basically what happens in this film? Damien finally finds out that he is the Antichrist, he, and he, where we find out he actually didn't know he was the Antichrist. And he finds out, he sees his birthmark in the back of his head, the three sixes, which is the three numbers for the devil. And then he rushes out, he runs out of the uh, military school, he runs out to this lake, and he starts screaming, Why me? Why me? And I was really interested to see what they do with that. It's like, oh, so he doesn't want this. He doesn't want to be the son of the devil. He doesn't want to release hell on earth one day he doesn't want to do that it's like oh that's really interesting and when they introduce that you think they're gonna go somewhere with it what did they do nothing because literally the next scene we see damien in it in like two minutes after that he's like oh i'm totally cool with it and literally after that where he's like why me and basically saying he doesn't want to be the son of the devil he asks his his cousin which is basically his best friend and he calls him his brother and when he asks him to join him to do uh, to conquer Earth, basically, so he will survive, he, and he says, "No, I don't want to." And he's like, "Oh, okay," and, he, and kills him. It makes him like uh, makes his brain like explode or whatever. They do nothing with that. I honestly feel if they actually did something with that and had Damien not want to be the son of the devil, you could have done some, uh, some really creative things. But they introduced it, and they just do absolutely fucking nothing with it. And it's a shame, too, because that could have been a really cool uh, plot in this film. That could have been, like, a really cool twist of where he doesn't want to. But it's like, oh, well, we don't have any ideas. I'm kind of upset that they didn't really do anything with the setting of this film. This movie is set in a military camp. This is set at a uh, boarding school. And I was really hoping they would do something compared to, like, Child's Play 3, to where they did, like, creative things. Like, maybe someone accidentally gets shot with a gun. Maybe they're practicing with guns, doing paintball, but then one of the guns actually has a real bullet in it, and someone gets shot, like, in Child's Play 3, which I'm going to compare it to. I was really hoping they'd do something fun or something unique with this setting, but they just have this for, like, no reason. They don't, again... They don't do anything with the setting, which is really upsetting because I like the setting of this film. It's at a boarding school. It's at a military school. Like, you could have done great things there. You could have had, like, fun kills. You could have had stuff going on where Damien was having life uh, life issues at this camp. Maybe he doesn't want to be there, and that's why he well, fully becomes the Antichrist or something. I, I just really wish they just did something fun with this setting. But again, they just do nothing with the setting, and it's upsetting. All in all, guys, Damien Omen 2, it's an okay sequel. I do think it's a its a good enough sequel. It's fine. It doesn't disrespect that original film. However, it does have the same story as the original film. They tried to do something new, but it didn't fully work. They introduced things that, that, that might go somewhere, but they don't really do anything with it. But it's a fine sequel. It's a passable sequel enough. It, it doesn't harm that original film. I don't think it's a very disrespectful sequel. But it is, a, it, it is an entertaining sequel enough, and I, w I could see myself rewatching this movie after watching the first movie. But I wouldn't recommend this to everyone. Maybe if you're looking for more of a slasher take on the Omens franchise, maybe this one will be for you. But if you're a huge fan of that first Omen movie, don't go in with high expectations with this film. So this, was a, this is a movie I wouldn't recommend to everybody, though.
What do you guys think about Damien Omen 2? Have you seen it? What do you think about it? Do you like this movie? Do you not like this movie? Do you prefer it over the first movie? Let me know in the comments below and we shall talk about it. And if you like this video, like it. If you love it, subscribe to the bell notification so you will get notified for all my latest videos and the rest of my Omen review series. And until my next video, I'll see you all next time.